This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Your IT skills are outdated in about 18 months. Stay ahead of the curve and strengthen your IT expertise with affordable, certification-based learning that will launch or advance your career. Individuals, use the code TWIT30 for 30% off a standard or premium individual IT pro membership at go.acilearning.com slash twit. Uh, this was kind of a late breaking, uh, bit of news as far as this show goes, because typically, uh, we have to find some folks earlier in the week, get them on the show. Uh, I happened to see this news fly by and, uh, excited to be joined today by Mark German of Bloomberg to talk about Apple's, um, experimentation with, uh, with AI. Welcome back to the show, Mark. Thanks both, as always, for having me. Glad yeah. to be here. Happy to talk about AI. Yeah. Yes. So um, let's let's do that. Of course, we've got ChatGPT. We've got uh, Google doing Bard. We've got Microsoft with its uh, co-pilot and all of this magic that's going on. But um, some would look at Apple and say, maybe the company uh, isn't sort of putting something out there. Uh, but you have heard that internally uh, the company is working on something. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, and then we'll dig in with even more. Yeah, Apple's definitely a laggard here, not just because they haven't announced anything, but because they're not you know, particularly close uh, on anything compelling or anything consumer grade in the AI space. Uh, typically, you know, Apple is a little bit behind the competition in terms of these next generation technologies. They try to come in here and they try to do something better. Uh, I would expect them to try to pull the same, uh, you know, rabbit out of the hat, uh, you know, or bunny out of the hat this time <laughs> too, right? Um, they have their own internal tool they've developed based on an LLM uh, called Apple GPT or Ajax GPT. Those are some names that people inside the company call it. Uh, it's based on a new LLM large language model framework they've created um, called Ajax or Apple Jax for short. It's based on Google Jax, which is an ML framework from Google. And within Apple, they're running it on Google Cloud. But mm. the idea is to develop their own large language model that runs on their own cloud infrastructure in addition to their own uh, consumer generative AI product that they hope to introduce sometime next year. And it's unclear exactly what that's going to be because they don't necessarily have a plan of record yet for what they're going to do. But they do have many people working on LLMs at the company. They're all in on AI and LLMs throughout the organization at this point. This is a new thing uh, that they're ramping up for, and this is going to be a big part of what Apple's doing over the next two years. So that's fascinating. What you just said about um, the current version, it's based on Google Jacks. It's running on the on Google Cloud. So this is an opportunity for internally the company to kind of see how to go about using a large language model before they so, develop their own entirely? Or will, uh, I mean, of course, you know, this is a little bit crystal ball, but it, right. in the future, you see them completely doing their own, not something that is based on what Google has? Yes, they are. They're, they are doing uh, their own. They are working on their own. And Ajax is the foundation of what they're going to uh, be building. And this is going to be a powerful LLM. And the thing to know about LLMs, and I think a lot of people don't get this, is there's a reason why Google, Microsoft, uh, OpenAI, now Apple have all been able to sort of pull something together around the same time within months of each other. That's because the fundamental technology that these generative AI products and these GPT products are using, it's all based on the same exact underlying tech. Mm. Um and the same underlying models. They're known as transformer models. So the technology is very much the same. Now, where do these companies differentiate? They differentiate on the training data, right? How you're training these models. And they differentiate with some of their secret sauce, their magic, and of course the consumer output. So basically Apple needs to reskin those underlying models to fit exactly the type of product they wanna build. I believe that they're going to try to do something in the productivity and creativity app space uh, longer term. But in the short term, I think they're going to try to um, integrate some sort of chat GPT like functionality uh, into the Siri app itself. Got it. Okay, so this is uh, really interesting because uh, shortly after WWDC um, and now I'm free. Oh, 
Uh, nope, now I've forgotten his name again. Daring Fireball. Um, Gruber. Gruber, thank you. John Gruber uh, had an event uh, that he typically has, and it's a talk show live. And there, uh, Craig Federighi was asked about Apple's sort of foray into AI. And one of the things that he talked about is, of course, uh, this has been a conversation in years past as well, but uh, this year saying, you know, while we may not be saying AI, 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 we've got it here, we've got it here, we've got it here. And one of the things that they talked about is in iOS 17, and you mentioned it in this piece, uh, the improved autocorrect that's coming in iOS 17 is a is based on a transformer model or is you know at its heart is a transformer model yeah so, but it's not an llm so okay, like yes the, could you clarify auto, yeah yeah so <laughs> the autocorrect um upgrade they're trying to make it uh they're trying to spin it pr and marketing wise into mm-hmm. being some sort of llm or some sort of major ai initiative uh the actual technology for the new autocorrect is under 50 megabytes uh, for example, in terms of how much space it takes, right? A real LLM, a real generative AI product, that is terabytes, right, of data. Mm-hmm. So it's completely two different worlds. Um, there's as much as they want to try to make it one in the same, there is no comparison. And they're going to do that until they're ready to to bring the real thing out the door, right? And so it's two different planets. Interesting. Okay. So this is another question that I had for you because in your piece, you uh, mentioned, quote, the company was caught flat footed in the past year with yeah. the introduction. And one of the questions I was going to ask you, because we, uh, it's, it's a common narrative among uh, Apple journalists or Apple, you know, coverers is that the company does the, the wait and see approach and they refine the tech and they do this and they do that. And so you have folks who who see that as the the way that Apple works, but then you have some folks who say, well, in this case, the company is behind and they kind of compete with each other. But it's almost as if from what you are mentioning, the company was caught flat footed, but they are trying to make the appearance as though a, they're doing a wait and see approach, but B, they've already got this stuff underlying in in the technology that they already have. But that that differentiation that you that you just talked about, that 50 megabytes versus the multiple terabytes and all the processing power and stuff suggests that maybe they're trying to sort of put a bandage on it or a stopgap and say, no, 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 they we're already doing this. It's a mix of things. So I'll give you an example. Okay. So obviously the Vision Pro is coming out years after many of the other VR and AR headsets that have been on the market. But the reality with that device is that Apple has been working on it since 2015, right? So they weren't necessarily caught flat-footed. They were just extraordinarily slow to market, mm. right? Um, this AI thing, they were cl- caught flat-footed in the sense is that they didn't even really start working on it until these things started to crop up publicly. So they really did miss the boat here. And quite frankly, they've been missing the boat on Siri and AI for years, Mm -hmm. even from the get-go, right? Uh, And it's really amazing and embarrassing given that Siri was launched four years before any other competing service. Yeah, I think that that kind of leads into one of my questions uh, about this is Siri. Of course, when we think of it's funny because I feel like we talk a lot about AI as if it's this brand new thing that suddenly is here. But in many ways, you know, on iOS, Siri is more or less an AI interface, you know, uh, maybe a lot, um, maybe a step down from where we're we're you know, finding ourselves now, same with assistant on Google side, again, going back to the narrative of, you know, series, not as good as the other ones out there. Um, How does that potentially impact Apple's efforts when it comes to this AI play? Could could that be seen as a disadvantage kind of carrying that um, the, the, the burden of that history along with it, or really it's just proofs in the pudding, you know, let it speak for itself. I I completely agree with you. I mean, I think Apple would be best served pretending Siri never existed. You know, <laughs> it's so interesting because an Apple Maps has the same problem. Uh, Apple customers, especially the ones who are telling their friends about what to use and not to use, they have a very long memory and they get burned very easily. Uh-huh. And so, you know, the idea that Siri has been terrible for many years, it doesn't matter what amount 
of improvements or the the range of improvements Apple makes to that product, it still carries that baggage uh, from many years ago. Likewise with Apple Maps, like Apple Maps is, I would say, borderline excellent at this point. Mm-hmm. Wall Street Journal had a good article about this the other day. <laughs> yep, saw that. And you know, people are starting to to use it, but you're never going to be able to drop that baggage that Apple Maps had from the beginning, and it's been. 11 years since Apple Maps launched. It's been, um, you know, 12 years since Siri launched. And so that's not going to go away. So I think Apple would be best served by doing a rebrand of Siri. I don't know what they would call it. I Maybe love Ajax. Apple. Hey, Ajax. That's, well, that's <laughs> or it's a large language yeah. model. Call it silly. The cleaning spray. <laughs> silly. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Well, and th- yeah. speaking of that, the, the, the long, um, memory, I, I see the same thing with HomeKit and Home. Uh, that initial yeah. launch and the, the, you know, the first year or so of exclusivity where there weren't that many products. And now there's so many out there that work with it. It's a great system, but people, even in our sort of, you know, tech sphere still think that it is not uh, a great system. And it's not because it's because they haven't used it, that, that they think that and that they, they, they still have that sort of um, narrative that's with it. Um, one of the, the sure. sort of, oh, God, please. No, I was going to say that's fair. I mean, I wouldn't characterize HomeKit as a great system, uh, but I, I do use it and it's mostly problem free. I have not used the Google and Amazon home ecosystems enough to make a fair comparison, but uh, in terms of maps and and the voice assistance and such, I think I could fairly say with confidence that uh, Siri and Apple Maps have both improved dramatically, but are both a step behind. Uh, Apple Maps, I think, has, has pulled away from its past way more than Siri has. Um, I just think Siri, there's just so much baggage there. It's not deeply integrated enough into the system and their AI efforts are sort of so all over the place that people don't really differentiate uh, what AI is. And I think, you know, what Apple considers or markets AI to be is different than what consumers think AI needs to be. Mm -hmm. And that's a marketing problem, right? And so Apple either needs to fix its marketing uh, or align the way it positions AI to how modern day consumers think of AI and they'll be able to better do that when they have the goods to offer next year. Mm -hmm. Um, The other thing that you talk about in this piece is this Apple GPT, um, an internal tool. What are uh, engineers doing with this tool? And especially, you know, we heard that uh, Apple and many other companies said, don't put your information into something like chat GPT because we're concerned that then that information is going to be used as part of the training model. It could blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh-huh. So what's, what's going on internally and uh, is this tool, you know, at the same level as chat GPT? How does it, how does it work for them? I think that was actually one of the driving forces behind releasing this tool internally is because there's clearly a need or a desire for people in engineering environments to use something like ChatGPT to help with product prototyping, code testing, uh, getting questions uh, answered based on data it's trained with, based on summarizing text, based on rewriting code and such. And so I think those tools are very powerful. But the last thing Apple wants is Apple engineers using uh, third-party tools, right, with Apple's confidential proprietary things that it's working on, right? So the need came about to actually build those tools for internal use cases. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And so in terms of the functionality, uh, it's pretty much the same as ChatGPT. Yeah. Uh, and then last, uh, you, you mentioned next year where we could see, um, the first kind of AI related announcement. Any, there's no plan of record, right? Okay. That's the problem. There's no plan of record yet. They haven't devised an actual consumer product strategy yet. So obviously that can fluctuate, but the goal is to have something next year. And any ideas on what that could look like? Where do you uh, see the company maybe putting its focus? I think there's a talk about Apple Watch technology. and So I would have to imagine that the first LLM rollout will be something to do with Siri, Mm -hmm. but next year they'll have this AI-based health coaching service. That's AI, but it's not like a generative AI or an LLM uh, type of situation. It's just a different category of AI. It's more of a old school type of AI where you're you're learning uh, the the way the user functions, you're learning more about the user, 
you're taking data in from the user, you're taking metrics from the user, and then you're using it to build a personalized health coaching plan and recommendations for specific dieting, for specific uh, health uh, things, specific workouts, specific fitness tasks. Um, so that's separate, but that is still AI. And don't you worry, they'll market it as such. <laughs> yes. I think we will start to see Apple uh, mentioning AI a little bit more than we have seen already. Mm -hmm. um, Mark German, it is always a pleasure to have you join us for the show. Uh, always sharing some great insights and some great quotes like uh, Apple would be best served pretending Siri never existed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thank you for your time. If folks want to follow you online and check out all the great work you're doing, of course, they can go to Bloomberg.com, but uh, anywhere else they should go. Yes, go to Bloomberg.com slash power on please to subscribe to my weekly column comes out every Sunday. You can follow me on Twitter, Twitter.com slash Mark Gurman and be sure to join the new power on discord uh, to keep in touch with me and others who uh, enjoy Apple. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks, Micah. Thanks, Jason. As always, I will see you next time. Uh, yes. Thanks. See you then. 